Hey everybody, it's Mr. George and welcome to class. It's Wednesday night, May 13th. Um, if we look at the agenda for tonight, tonight we're going to read the story of the Wright Brothers. Um, in your student book, the story is on pages 79 through 81. I also have uh, a PDF file of the story in case you do not have your book. Um, what we're going to do a little bit differently tonight is I am going to ask you questions while I read the story and I'm going to show the questions on the screen. Uh, I'm going to ask you to pause the video after I ask the question to see if you can answer the question. And then after you, after you find the answer, then you can continue the video you know, until I get until I get to the next question. So there's three parts of the story. So we'll do this in, in, in three different parts. So after we watch the video, I'm sorry, after you watch the video and answer the questions, um, I would encourage you to read the story independently, all by yourself and out loud so you can practice fluency and pronunciation. Um, the second time around, it should be easier for you because you would have already heard me read the story and you'd hopefully have a better understanding of the story um, because we've answered some questions along the way. So tonight we're really going to work on reading comprehension. So the good news is tonight there is nothing for you to pass in. You do not need to pass anything in. Once you're done with the assignment, all you need to do is just email me that you completed the assignment. If you have any questions, of course, I'm available. You can email me directly during scheduled class time. These are the three parts of the story. So part one is a childhood of curiosity. Part two is persistence to success. And part three is a legacy in the air. All right. So one more time after you finish the lesson, you know, please email me that you completed it. And there's nothing that you need to pass in. There is no Google Doc. There's no summary. Um, and at the bottom here, uh, once you're done, and you can do this anytime during the week, um, I also left all of the free online resources that are available to you with the links to my YouTube video for each online resource, as well as the link to that resource. So we have the vocabulary website. We have virtual field trips. We have visit a museum around the world. We have the math skills, as well as the link to the geography website. Uh, we've already looked at Europe and South America and North America and parts of Africa. Um, and then the last site was that photos section. That's that website that has about 30 different pictures with the small captions or narratives under, uh, under each picture. Where you can learn about a place. I think we've already looked at Las Vegas, we looked at uh, New York City, uh, Statue of Liberty. Um, so let's get to the story. So what I have is these stories up here um, and these are going to be the six questions for the first part. Okay. So I'd always recommend that you read the questions first and then read the story. So at least you have an idea of what information you are, you are looking for. The Wright Brothers, Air Pioneers by David White, 2014. Orville Wright, 1871 to 1948 and Wilbur Wright, 1867 to 1912 were American inventors. They were aviation experts who are credited with building the world's first successful airplane. As you read, identify the challenges the brothers faced when engineering the first airplane. Part one, a childhood of curiosity. Orville and Wilbur Wright were born four years apart in different cities. They shared a curiosity about the world and a love of tinkering that would make 
history. Remember, when there's a uh, footnote here, if you go down to the bottom of the page, it will tell you what that means. Okay, it will tell you what tinkering means. So just to show you down here, tinker means to try to repair or make adjustments to something. Wilbur was born in 1867 on a small farm near Millville, Indiana. Orville was born in 1871 in a house in Dayton, Ohio. Their father was a bishop in the Church of the United Brethren in Christ. The Wrights had five children in all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ruchlin, Lauren, and Catherine were the names of the other children. Life in the Wright house was strict but loving. Both parents encouraged their children to enjoy school and learn as much as they could. A large library of books about all kinds of subjects helped the right children quench their thirst for knowledge from a very early age. <clears throat> Remember, when there's a footnote, you can come down to the bottom and you'll be able to see that quench means to satisfy a thirst or desire for something. Oval and Wilbur's fascination with flight began with a present their father gave them, a flying toy. It had a paper body and other parts made of cork and bamboo. Rubber bands provided the power. The young boys, ages 7 and 11, were thrilled to make the little toy fly across the room, so much so that they broke it. They remembered how it looked, though, and promised each other that someday they would fly in the air, just like the little toy. The boys continued to be interested in mechanical things and flight. Orville sold kites at school to make money. Wilbur started reading all he could about how birds flew and machines worked. Though the boys were good students, neither graduated from high school. Not many did in those days, actually. Wilbur was hit in the face with a baseball bat when he was a teenager and suffered from irregular heartbeats the rest of his life. He stayed at home for a while, during which time their mother developed tuberculosis, which at that time was a devastating disease with no known cure. Wilbur recovered himself and then stayed at home to care for his mother. Orville left high school on his own to start a printing business. He and Wilbur designed a printing press that worked very well. The two later sold the printing business and opened a bicycle shop. They were both very good mechanics and could fix just about anything anyone asked them to fix. They inherited this skill and desire from their mother, who was the family mechanic. It was in the bicycle shop that the idea of the airplane was born. One day, Wilbur squeezed an empty bicycle tube box flat. He noticed how it looked when he twisted in his hands. The flattened box is the exact shape of the two-winged glider that the Wrights would produce just a couple years later. They also used a bicycle chain as a propeller on their plane. It should be pointed out here that the Wrights had to invent the propeller as a means of propulsion. The double triangle design of the plane also looks a lot like a bicycle. And one day in 1902, Orville and Wilbur took turns pedaling one of their own bicycles down a city street 
as fast as they could go with a third wheel attached in the front. The wheel was mounted flat on the handlebars. It spun freely with two metal plates on top of it. One plate was flat and the other was curved. This setup allowed the Wrights to measure air resistance, another key to building an airplane that would work. The Wrights had also made kites, very large ones. In fact, by 1900, they were making one so large that people could fly in them, sort of. These were called gliders and Orville and Wilbur actually built one or two that were large enough for a person to ride in. They flew on nothing but air current and the person could get a ride of about 10 seconds before the glider came down to the ground. So that's the end of part one. So here are six questions that I would like you to answer. So we have number one, how many siblings do Orville and Wilbur Wright have? Number two, describe their parents' relationship with their children. Number three, how old was Wilbur and Orville when they received a flying toy as a gift? Number four, what did Orville sell at school to make money? Number five, neither boys graduated high school. They started a printing business and then sold it. What type of business did they open next? And the last question for part one, number six, by 1900, what were the Wright brothers making that allowed people to fly? So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to answer each of these questions and you can go back to the story and you can see if you can find in the story the evidence that will support your answer and at this point you can pause the video okay, you can pause the video and then what I'll do is after you play the video you continue playing I will share the answers with you I will share the answers with you okay so please pause the video And at this point, these are the questions with the answers. So the first one, how many siblings do Orville and Wilbur have? Well, they have three siblings. So there are five children in the family. Okay, so that means that they have three siblings, and their names were uh, Ruslan, Lauren, and Catherine. Describe their parents' relationship with their children. They were very loving and encouraged them to enjoy school and learn as much as they could. Number three, how old was Wilbur and Orville when they received a flying toy as a gift? Wilbur was seven and Orville was 11. Because remember, they were four years apart. Number four, what did Orville sell at school to make money? Orville sold kites. Number five. Neither boys graduated high school. They started a printing business and then sold it. What type of business did they open next? They opened a bicycle shop. In the last question, number six, by 1900, what were the Wright brothers making that allowed people to fly? They were making gliders that stayed in the air for about 10 seconds. Great. So at this point, um, this video is going to end, and then you can play the next video, which will contain part two of the story with the questions and with the answers. Thanks for watching.